Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. So uh, this video is going to be on uh, complete and incomplete metric spaces. So complete. Uh, so we might just entitle it completeness. Okay, so the definition then of a complete metric space. So complete metric space. So you have a metric space um, XD, which consists of a set and a metric defined on it. And this metric space is going to be said to be complete if all Cauchy sequences are convergent. Cauchy sequences converge to a limit within the metric space. Converge to a limit within the metric space, to a limit within the metric space. So that is the definition of a complete metric space, uh, the, uh, the metric space. So the definition of why it's called complete is if we look again at this example that we saw at the, pre at the end of the last video, uh, where, um, which was our example of a, uh, an, uh, of a metric space which, in which co uh, we had a Cauchy sequence that didn't converge. Um, if we look at this uh, set, 0 to 1, where you don't include 0, but you have 1, uh, so that's the interval here, so this is 0, this is 1, and you look at the sequence xn, which is equal to 1 over n, then we've seen before that this is a Cauchy sequence. It's certainly a Cauchy sequence in the real numbers. All of the terms of this sequence are still in this metric space, and as a subspace of the real line, this is a metric space with exactly the same metric properties. So the question of whether this is Cauchy in this metric space is exactly the same as the question of whether it's Cauchy in the real line. So it is indeed Cauchy in this uh, metric space. Okay, uh, so uh, this is a Cauchy sequence, but it converges on zero, and zero is not in this uh, metric space, so it doesn't have a limit within this metric space, and that's the that's where the term completeness comes from, because it almost feels like this metric space is missing a point. It needs that point zero, and if we added in that point zero, then it will be complete. That's why, where the name comes from, that uh, these metric spaces in which you have Cauchy sequences, these sequences which intuitively should converge, but then don't converge, it's more because they are almost converging to a point that should be in the metric space, but isn't, and therefore to, uh, to finish, to complete the metric space, we need to add those points in, and uh, a complete metric space is one where uh, all which contains all of these points uh, which should be in it. So it is, it contains all the points that should be in it, i.e. all Cauchy sequences do converge to a limit within it. You cannot find a Cauchy sequence that does not converge. Okay, so that's the definition of a complete metric space. So some very, very powerful examples are, uh, very, very important examples, are the real line and the complex plane. We will prove that those are complete metric spaces, not in this video, we'll prove it later on. We're firstly going to establish some basic theories about complete metric spaces, and then we'll start proving uh, whether or not our metric spaces are complete or not. Well, you know, our favourite metric spaces that we've been defining. Okay, uh, now, uh, just uh, in this video, though, it's just definitions, and um, those are two very, very good examples. And once we've got those, you'll see that we get a whole family of other ones. Uh, so we also get, for instance, at this interval, where you have the closed interval 0 to 1, that's a complete metric space. And uh, in a few videos' time, you will see how you get from the fact that the real line uh, is a complete metric space to the fact that 0 one is also a complete metric space. We're going to discuss that. Uh, that's going to be one of our basic theorems. Okay, uh, basically it's because this is a closed subset of R, so um, you can look forward to seeing why that is. Um, so basically the other definition is the definition of an incomplete metric space. And an incomplete metric space, there are it's far easier to come up with examples of incomplete metric spaces and understand why they are incomplete than it is to prove that a metric space such as R or C is complete. It's far more difficult to go uh, to prove that a metric space is complete than it is to prove a metric space is incomplete. So an incomplete metric space is just one in which uh, you in which not all Cauchy sequences converge. Not all Cauchy sequences converge. 
sequences converge. So uh, a simple example is this one that we've been working with all along. This is an incomplete metric space. So uh, open at the side of zero, closed at the side of one. Uh, another example of an incomplete metric space is the real line uh, subtract a single point. So if you take uh, the real line and then you take out a single point from the real line, then that is no longer an inc uh, a complete metric space. It's an incomplete metric space. The reason being that we can create sequences which converge to there. For instance, if you just take the sequence xn is equal to a plus 1 over n, then that is going to be, uh, so if we write some terms of this sequence out, we'll get a plus 1 over 1, which is just 1, so that's, we might write that there, a plus 1, this is a, uh, then we get a plus 1 over 2, which is a plus a half, so it's going to go down to there, a plus 1 over 3, it's going to go down to here, a plus 1 over 4, it's going to go down to um, a quarter of the way along like that. Okay, and it goes on and on and on. Okay, so the reason this is a uh, this is a, a Cauchy sequence uh, is because if you give me an epsilon, remember the Cauchy criterion says that uh, for all epsilon uh, greater than zero, I must be able to find to a point in this sequence after which the terms are arbitrarily close together. But if I just um, if I just go to the term in the sequence uh, such that um, basically no to every term is going to if you take a term it's going to get, this is a monotonically decreasing sequence so the next term along is going to be smaller uh, than the previous term and therefore uh, but all terms are, are going to be greater than a so it, basically once you've got to a term that's say a big n all of the terms after that are going to be contained within the interval a to a big n. So, if I make the distance between a and a big n less than epsilon, then the distance between any of the terms in between that is going to be less than epsilon. So all I need to do is make the distance between a and a big n less than epsilon. So this is how I will choose my big n. Yeah. I uh, will make it such that this is true. So I get the distance between a and a plus 1 over n, which is just a big n, uh, should needs to be less than epsilon. And because this is the real line, well, it's got the same metric. It's inherited the metric from the real line. It's the modulus of a minus a plus 1 over n, like that. And that's just going to be equal to the modulus of 1 over n, which, and well, negative 1 over n. So it's going to be the modulus of negative 1 over n, which is just equal to 1 over n, because big N is some natural number. Okay, so that's a positive number, 1 over n, big N. Okay, so all I need to do is make 1 over big N uh, less than epsilon, so I just need to pick n greater than 1 over epsilon. And remember, we also had the criterion that n was a natural number, because it has to be correspond to a term of this sequence. It doesn't mean, for uh, it, say, I make epsilon um, 1.5, then this becomes 2 thirds. Uh, I don't want you to make n equal to... Um, you know, I, you could make it equal to four fifths or something, but that doesn't correspond to any terms. So I want you to pick the first natural number that is bigger than one over epsilon. You could go beyond that. You could make it greater than that. It's um, greater than the first natural number after uh, one over epsilon. You don't have to pick the first one. It's just most natural to pick the first one. Okay, so basically, you give me an epsilon. I can find you a point, uh, a term in this sequence, such that if I pick any two terms after that in the sequence, that di the distance between them is less than epsilon. So that's why that is a Cauchy sequence, um, but it doesn't converge, because in the real line, what this will converge to is it will converge to A, uh, and uh, and if it, if it converged to something else, if this converged to something else in, the, in this metric space, R minus A, then it will converge to something else in the real line. So it must convert, it's converging basically to a point that isn't in this metric space. So it doesn't converge in this metric space. You have a Cauchy sequence which does not converge. So this is an incomplete metric space. Complete metric space. Another famous example, which is just a more extreme version of this, is R minus the whole rational numbers. So basically, you take the real line and take all of the rational numbers out. Well, that's incomplete for the same argument that this is incom incomplete. Um, 